Eva Greenushla, Ta Falcher Riff Cock in you, the No Heart Special to Show in Old Skull Lim Lee, Kundilimni in Aaron. Hello to everybody, and you are most welcome to our graduation ceremony here today at the University of Limerick on the banks of the River Shannon, Ireland. It is a wonderful day that we have planned for you, and I hope that you, your friends, and your family get to enjoy this special time as the university awards you for your endeavour and achievement during the course of your studies with us here at the University of Limerick. Take this time to relax and enjoy and breathe in the significance of your achievement and note that this achievement is something that will always stay with you and that you will be able to reflect back on in years to come as you recount the journey of your time here at the University of Limerick the times where you put in great effort to achieve your goals, to work with your lecturers and tutors and professional staff in order to realise the dreams that you came to us with on the first day of your journey. I hope that this special occasion for you, your family and your friends is all that it can be at this time and that you will go on to celebrate even when this ceremony is over. Cogordicus live Galair. Welcome to this UL online conferring ceremony. My role today is to say a few words on the significance of the academic robes worn by our academic staff and the graduates. The origins of academic attire date back to the 12th century when universities were beginning to emerge. At that time, the dress of the scholar, both student and teacher, was that of the monk. The academic gown can be traced back to the Council of Oxford in 1222, where the local bishop decreed that all clergy should wear a closed flowing gown. Both Oxford and Cambridge adopted this practice and continued it even when the clerical attire changed. In 1895, formal standards were agreed for American universities, which continue to this day. There, the colour used is indicative of the subject to which the degree pertains. This same uniformity does not apply here in Ireland and you will find it very difficult to identify a pattern or consistency. The hood was originally intended to serve as a cover for the tonsured head of the cleric. Caps came to be used later. You will notice that some academics wear caps while others do not, depending on the custom at the university at which the degree was conferred. In medieval times, the mace was a weapon of war and was a heavy staff or club made from metal and was originally used for breaking armour. In 13th century France, the mace was carried up by the monarch's bodyguard and began to acquire a ceremonial function as a symbol of secular power. At a live ceremony, parchments would be presented across the university mace to the graduating students by the president. Today, the UL mace will be placed on the table in front of our president to maintain its significance for use in acknowledging your academic achievement. I hope that you enjoy the ceremony and can celebrate your success with your families at home. Thank you. Graduands, welcome to your graduation ceremony. This online ceremony will last for approximately 45 minutes. I now call on the President, Professor Kirsten Mai, to officially start proceedings. Members of Governing Authority, members of the Academic Council, distinguished guests, parents, partners and families, graduates of the Class 2021, colleagues. 
A meeting of the university is hereby convened for the purpose of conferring academic awards. Exercising the power granted to the University of Limerick by Orachtes Aaron, I hereby confer degrees of the university on graduates from the Faculty of Science and Engineering. I now call upon President of the University of Limerick to deliver her conferring address. Graduates, welcome. Dear Eve, I must begin by offering you the warmest of congratulations on completing this hugely important part of your learning journey and your life. Take a moment and reflect. Be proud for you have graduated at an immensely challenging time for the global community through COVID-19. Unprecedented, deadly and disruptive. These could be used to describe the last 15 months of life for you as students, for your parents, family and friends, for all of us. And while we are beginning to emerge on the other side, significant challenges posed by the impact of the coronavirus pandemic will be with us for years to come, but so will be opportunities to reflect, take stock and to do things differently. Speaking of emerging, today, you are emerging from your journey through higher education. For some of you, your steps on this pathway of formal education will end here for now, and you will enter or resume professional life with a deeper understanding of the world and yourself, and with a valuable skill set. For others, you will stay on the path of formal learning, inquiry and knowledge exchange by taking your studies onwards. Nonetheless, and whatever path you have chosen, your success is hard-earned, highly valued and, above all, a credit to you and your support network. No one gets to graduate without a great deal of hard work, commitment and persistence and some degree of self-sacrifice along the way. None of you came to education without that basic desire to help others to fulfil their potential. By fulfilling your own potential here at UL, you are now equal to that task. Furthermore, and as graduates of 2021, you have put yourself at the heart of this most valuable human endeavour – to empower others to empower themselves. Thank you, tutors, who work with such passion and commitment to educate the leaders and decision-makers of tomorrow. Thank you, parents, guardians and your family who stand behind you offering the support that cannot be measured. Thank you, friends, who stand by your side and for just being there. And thank yourself for having the perseverance to see it through to the end. You have shown resilience throughout your journey and at the most challenging time. Education has shown to be resilient also. However, we must learn from this pandemic and how change was foisted upon us. We must transform education and we must do it so that it meets the challenges of tomorrow. Any transformation or reimagining of university education has to go hand in glove with the reform of its funding model and an enhancement of investment into research infrastructure and talent, research capacity and capabilities. Since its foundation, UL has evolved from a regional institution for technical education into a national comprehensive university with growing European and global reach through excellence in research and education. We have you your alumni, who are the most sought-after graduates that industry so desires and society needs. UL has consistently led on student employability in Ireland. Developing talent pipelines has supported the attraction of significant foreign direct investment into the region, the flourishing of multinational corporations and indigenous businesses. It is talent that underpins the vibrant regional innovation ecosystem. You are entering into that world as our ambassadors and we are so proud of you. Today, as we know, should be filled with the grandeur of the ceremony held on our stunning campus and there is no replacement for that. Your loss is our loss also, but we will come back again when it is safe to do so. Your academic achievements are worthy of the highest praise. Indeed, to achieve an award and meet the exacting standards of this institution is a success in itself but to do so with the backdrop of a global pandemic warrants the deepest admiration and richest congratulations. Normally, these special days would be celebrated with family and friends and supporters. 
but we have been forced to ma make sacrifices to protect ourselves, each other and the communities we serve. Never before have we seen the importance of community spirit, values and ironically togetherness. We have stood stronger together by staying apart and despite that anomaly, homes and classrooms, be this virtual or in person, are reinforced as a seedbed of community values. I hope you will look back on your time at UL in Limerick and as part of a community of scholars. As I mentioned already, society is reopening and we are on the road to recovery. Our societal rejuvenation will be supported by you, bringing your skills, creativity and commitment into professional life and our communities. The importance of our sector has been highlighted by the COVID-19 crisis. Science and the relevance of educational engagement and global research activities is how we overcome adversities like this. To that end, we continue to stand firm against any dilution of educational standards to ensure that you can use your degree confidently and proudly in the knowledge that it is an unquestionable statement of ability, academic integrity and attainment. More than ever, we need that sense of community to be sustained and enhanced to help us address the many imbalances and societal challenges before us. The shared experience of being a graduate can give rise to future experiences where you get to enhance your life and the lives of others, where you make a difference. You can build on your own educational achievement to date and use this as a platform for lifelong learning and for shaping the world of tomorrow. University of Limerick has always placed educational access at the heart of our mission. It is our role to ensure that anyone who has a passion to learn should be enabled to do so. We cannot squander talent because we did not remove basic obstacles to learning. We will continue to make education accessible to all. We will continue in our pursuits of equality, diversion and inclusion. It is imperative that we continue to invest in enabling technologies to ensure, for example, that we can benefit from the academic contributions of a wide range of learners of different abilities. This ensures that our store of knowledge, which every student, every teacher and every researcher contributes to, gives us an ever deeper and wider understanding of the world we live in and everyone in it. Cherish the knowledge and truths you have gained. Keep adding to it and remember that you are now alumni of this institution. You are inextricably linked to University of Limerick and we urge you to stay in touch as you go out in the world for the next exciting chapter of your lives. To finish, I will offer you these. As we look forward to the rest of the year and 2022 with growing optimism, remember this. Patience, determination and hard work are key ingredients for success and you are now equipped with the mindset and the tools to achieve success, however we may define success, and overcome challenges. And while we face challenges, we need to be cognizant of our own self-worth, our ability to learn and our potential to grow. Savor the short-term success, but be mindful of your long-term fulfillment and all the while think carefully about your priorities. I will close by wishing you all the very best for your new adventures in the knowledge that when life does become uncertain, you will always find comfort and sustenance from the achievement of your graduation. Stand tall, be proud, relish the achievement and shine a light. Congratulations and well done. Thank you very much. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome the Minister for Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science, Mr. Simon Harris TD, to say some words of acknowledgement and congratulations to you. Hello there and thank you very much for allowing me to be here virtually as part of this really important day for you and your families. As a nation together, we have made an extraordinary effort over the course of the last year and more in response to the spread of COVID-19. Every aspect of our lives has come under pressure as we've worked together in response to what has been an unprecedented threat. All of you, every one of you, have shown tremendous dedication, courage and resilience in completing your studies under these difficult circumstances. You have pursued your ambition under the most trying conditions and limitations that this pandemic has caused. And today is my opportunity to congratulate you. I want to congratulate you as Minister for Further and Higher Education. I want to congratulate you as a former Minister for Health and I want to congratulate you as a citizen of our country. All of you, no doubt, have grown 
and matured. You've increased your knowledge, your skills, you've developed a deeper level of personal awareness and confidence. This journey that you today have completed has so many implications for your future self, the decisions you're going to make and the opportunities that life will bring as a result of your achievements. And with that, there will be a ripple effect where your achievements will also potentially impact on those closest to you, your family, your partners, your friends. Those of you who have taken this journey are going to inspire others to follow in your footsteps, to believe that they too can fulfill their potential and pursue a career in helping others and serving the public good. I would also at this juncture like to acknowledge the really hard work done by university staff, endeavouring to keep the show on the road, to continue to deliver tuition, to keep university services active and to continue to support the student body despite the pandemic. And I want to thank each and every one of them for their efforts. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for persevering with your studies despite the trials that you have faced as a result of the pandemic. The fortitude with which you have borne the stresses of your studies and the pandemic is nothing less than inspirational. And I'm sure that your future careers will be equally inspirational. Thank you for your service. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you for your contribution to our national effort. And I wish you all the very best as you take this next step on your exciting journey. And as we take that step with you to make sure we don't just go back to normal, but that we build a better country as we emerge from this pandemic. Congratulations, Cohortigas. Thank you very much. I am now pleased to call on the Dean of Science and Engineering, Professor Sean Arkins, to make his address of welcome and to present the candidates for the conferring of undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. Hello, my name is Sean Arkins. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Science and Engineering. As flexible learners, you're uniquely familiar with the demands of balancing work and family life with your studies. Your abilities to adapt have been central to your academic success. But your college experiences have differed radically from that of every previous graduating class and hopefully all future graduating classes. You have been uniquely challenged in the fire of a global pandemic. And while the challenge has not yet expired, we can now perhaps look forward to brighter days ahead and to a time when this lockdown will be a distant memory. Over 100 years ago, a disease misnamed as Spanish flu affected a staggering one third of the world's population and killed 50 million. But 1918 was a world that didn't know viruses very well. The first virus had just been identified. Now we are familiar with PCR and the uh, merits of viral or mRNA vaccines. Technology has certainly expanded our ability to adapt. Can you imagine trying to navigate the current viral pandemic without the developments that we've made in the past 40 years in science, engineering, design, mathematics, and indeed computing? The aftermath of the 1918 pandemic brought a baby boom, the Charleston and the Roaring Twenties. Life after COVID-19 will also be different. We have learned how to work diff differently and perhaps better. But unlike our ancestors in the 1920s, our post-COVID world cannot return to uh, life as before. You, the class of 2021, must help to show us how not to put the pieces back together again, but instead how to create a new and better normal. The pandemic has shown us the many inequalities that have defined our lives for far too long. It has also allowed us to reflect on how we would like our world and lives to be and has fostered a better appreciation of our community and our environment. And that environment is endangered. Global warming due to increased greenhouse gases in the developed world poses the most severe problem for governments today. While science and engineering developments were central to industrialization and the resulting global challenges, science and engineering will also be critical to the solutions. From now on, our development must be sustainable. Scientific engineering and technological innovations will be central to achieving sustainable development. These sustainable development goals were created by the United Nations 
and identify a set of targets, such as the eradication of extreme poverty, the delivery of improved education, and healthcare for all, and equality for women. Many of these goals, like affordable, sustainable energy and health and well-being, will particularly challenge the ingenuity and technology of our science and engineering graduates. As science and engineering graduates, your abilities will be critical to achieving sustainable development in our post-COVID world as we struggled to realign our ambitions with sustainable climate health. Your disciplines will be key to supporting the post-COVID recovery as we look to increasing our efficiency and effectiveness in the production of products and the delivery of services in a sustainable manner. Your experience, together with the independence and resilience that you have developed over the past semesters, will stand you well in your future careers. Your expertise will be necessary to drive all our economic ambitions and to provide the foundations for a sustainable future. Science and engineering are continuously developing. Continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. As flexible learners, you already appreciate the benefits of professional development. Stay open to change. The University of Limerick and the Faculty of Science and Engineering will be here with current and state-of-the-art programmes to help you on your career journey. In closing, let me congratulate the graduates here today on your achievements in particularly challenging times. You all have bright futures ahead. Well done to all of you, and I hope that you enjoy this event. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be conferred. Therefore, I present the candidates for undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards and request that you confer the awards on them. The Assistant Dean Academic Affairs, Dr. Rena Cole, will now call the candidates from this faculty in each award category and in alphabetical order. Certificate in Artificial Intelligence, Aziz Ujit. Robert Barrett, Ray Beechner, Raphael Azaris Berhudiju, Mariana Botica, Mark Cahill, Dara Campbell, Kenneth Francis Casey, Fergal DC, Mark Devine, Fabiola Faria, Mark Garvey, James Gibbons, Narashima Rao Golpalani Fancata. Robert Kubala, Timothy Hrisikos, Michael Kiley, Connor Kiley, Barry Lawton, Andrew Lynch, Morgan Lynch, Prabhu Marianne, Michael McKegney, Olga Margarita Minguet, David Nolan, Connor O'Mara, Tara O'Sullivan, Nigel Portley, Anthony Purcell, Stephen Quirk, John Ringrose, Pierluigi Riti, Michael Scali, Carla Sequera do Amaral, Carlos Santiago, Mary Olivia Toomey, Xiaoming Zhang. Diploma and Supply Chain Management, Gabrielle Bianchi. Specialist Diploma in Embedded Systems Engineering, Jeremy Fred A. Chong, Filippo Bellini, Michael Joseph Collins, Gary Cribben, James Drew, Fulvio Gioretti, Joseph Heaver, Richard Gerard P. O. Killeen, Yevgeny Mayorov, David McLaughlin, Keith McNamara, Barry O'Connor, Sean O'Mara, Neil Anthony Quinn, Mark Robert Noel Roach, Elias Rodriguez Martin, Jen Wang. Specialist Diploma in Quality Management Lean Systems, John Boland, Kira Brown, Magella Collins, 
Anthony Martin Conlon, Daniel Cronin, Eileen Crotty, Rory Cullinan, Philip Despard, Lana Diaz, Neil Enright, Joao Ferreira, Niall Gannon, Sean Thomas Griffin, Daniel Grimes, Elizabeth Harries, Matthew Keane, Linda Jean Keane, Fiona Kyo, Paul Lochran, David John Marr, David McWalter, Vincent McRain, Daniel Joseph McGuinness, Mike Meany, Claire Mockler, Aideen Murphy, Daniel O'Donoghue, Niall O'Connor, Robert O'Connor, Fiona Maria O'Rourke, Ben William Joseph Rowley, Kenneth Ryan, Roderick James Ross Scott, Claire Turner, Cornelia Wiresmuller, Connor Hugh Whelan, and Karen Marie Whitlow. Specialist Diploma in Quality Management, Six Sigma. Olabisi Akilomen, Fiona Ann Cassidy, Paul Highland, Siobhan Lally, Paul Anthony Lynham, Brian McGelligot, Brendan O'Callaghan, Dara O'Callaghan, Babatundi Olotu Jubril, Dermot Andrew Sheehan, Connor Ward. Specialist Diploma in Regulatory Affairs in Biopharmaceuticals, Rana Aldaman, Sonia Louise Breen, John Michael Breen, Michelle Carew, Margaret Carr, Charlene Carty, Joan Clow, Sharon Coyle, Haley Margaret Cranston, Oscar Krenzel, Elizabeth Maria Crimmins, Yolantha Guaba, Michael Gerard Hanrahan, Marie Healy, Sheila Rosari Hen, John Keneally, Tara Magella Kennedy, Geraldine Kenny, Emily Elizabeth Kyo, Louise Mary Kinsla, Jackie Madden, Neve Marr, Anne Marie Marr, Lorraine McGill, Elaine McGrail, Kian McGrenna, Andrea Elizabeth McKiernan, David Mead, Fiona Malloy, Johanna Mary Morrissey, Anita Catherine Honor Murphy, Amy Murphy, Stephanie Ann Murphy, Kakachulu Salome Nadji, Anne O'Leary, Karen Ann O'Donovan, Rudrina Patricia O'Sullivan, Sinead Phillips Collins, Mary Veronica Ryan, Cleana Ryan, Elvira Siskuvian, Lara Sutton, Hilda Bridget Teodoro. Specialist Diploma in Supply Chain Management, Anne Sophie Julia Bominger, Brian Keneally, Roseanne Dawson, Yolanda Maria Diaz Garcia, Sean Dunford, Alexandra G. Shulusku, Robert Fitzgerald, Emmett Gardner, Christina George, Paul James Gibbons, Nicola Jane Hannan, Marlo Mary Elizabeth Carney, Lorcan Michael Kinirons, Catherine Mary Linsky, Sarah McElroy, Kevin McHugo, Ethna Eilish Murray, Catherine O'Malley, Philip Augustine O'Reilly, Moata Sadaka, Virgilio Sora, Jacqueline Huerty, Aidan Patrick White. I now call upon Professor Eamon Murphy to say a few words to the graduating class of 2021. 
Welcome graduates and thank you for joining us today for this virtual and most unusual ceremony. It's difficult even where to begin. There's a very simple text of a few hundred words and the book is called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. And in it, the boy asks the horse, what is the bravest thing you ever did, horse? And the reply was to ask for help. But the boy said, is this not an indication of weakness? And the horse said, no, to ask for help shows great strength. But to ask for help, who do you ask? How do you ask? And when to ask? It's not just simply this, the decision to look for help. You are starting, or in many cases, continuing a journey that you started on in your careers, and we wish you very, very well. I would like you to do a very simple exercise coming out of today. The last 12 or 18 months have been very difficult. And I would like you to make three columns. In the first column, column A, list all of the things that you have done in the last 18 months. In column B, how these have developed you, or in technical terms, how you've internalized those uh, experiences. And finally, how you can bring those experiences to a new role. So for instance, some of you are graduating from my old stamping ground in Lean Six Sigma and quality management today. And in there, you learned in statistics how to make decisions based on very, that's the first experience. The second one, in column B, from that, you learned how to manage under uncertainty. And what can you bring to the new role? You can bring how to manage ambiguity. That's what's needed in the new situation. So what are the skills that are needed in this managing of new ambiguity? And you have them in abundance. You may not realize you have them. And when you come to list those skills that you've acquired in the last 12 months, very few of you will put down the fact that you have emotional experience. And how have you uh, developed this um, emotional intelligence? And I, in a very simple way, going back to the boy and the fox, you have learned incredibly how to ask for help, when to ask for help, but most importantly, you have learned how to filter. You have learned how to detach yourself from the responses. You have learned skills that you never dreamed that you would have or that you would need. But you have acquired them. And these are tremendous strengths that are needed for team leaders in the new blended work environment. So not alone have you learned the formal skills on this course, you have learned tremendous tacit skills and you have improved enormously in your emotional intelligence. Finally, I would ask you to do two or three things out of today. The first and most important is to thank. Thank your partners, thank your parents, thank your children who have supported you and helped you to come here today. Next, I would ask you um, to remember those who are less well off in our society in the K-shaped uh, economy where those unlike you who are less well off, please remember them. And finally, and most importantly, remember that if you have developed these kind of skills under postgraduate programs, how much more you will learn from the masters and please come back to us. Thank you very much. Cohortigus Agus Guma Gorov Mila Mahogat.